The transfusion of blood products, such as packed red blood cells, plasma, or platelets, is a task that requires the use of specific equipment, as well as the following of specific procedures, in order to guarantee the safety of the recipient. This video will demonstrate and explain the setup and preparation for transfusing blood products, as well as the process of transfusion. It begins with an order. To transfuse blood products, two orders will actually be needed. The first order will be for the product to be prepared. This is the order that triggers blood bank to have the appropriate product ready for use. This does not give permission to administer the product to the patient. The second order is to transfuse the product. This is the order that gives the nurse the ability to administer the blood product. The nurse can not administer a blood product unless there is an active order to transfuse that product. Taking a closer look at this particular order, you will notice that two units were ordered to be prepared for this patient, but only one unit is ordered to be transfused right now. That second unit will not be given at this time, but will stay available in blood bank in case further transfusion is necessary. Another order that will accompany blood product transfusion is the type and screen. This will need to be drawn and resulted before any blood product can be prepared. If there is a valid type and screen previously resulted, it may not be necessary to draw another one at this time. If the prepare and transfuse orders are in place, as soon as blood bank has the product available, it could be released to the floor. But before you release that blood, there are some tasks that must be completed. Verify your patient's IV access. The patient must have an IV. A 22 gauge is the minimum requirement, but larger gauge IVs will flow more smoothly. Verify that the patient has a signed consent for blood in the hard chart. There are two options. The first is a consent for transfusion of blood and or blood products. The patient, a witness, and the physician will need to have signed this in order to make it valid. The other option for consent is a passage in the consent for surgery and invasive procedures. At the bottom of this form, there is a section for blood that states that the patient consents to a transfusion for the duration of this hospitalization. Check the patient's vital signs. Ensure everything is within expected ranges. If there are any concerns regarding the patient's vitals, consult with the physician before moving forward with the transfusion. Make sure these pre-procedure vitals are entered into EPIC. With an IV in place, consent on the chart, and vitals within expectations, the next step is to gather the necessary supplies. Two bags of saline will be needed. Small volume bags such as 100 milliliter or 250 milliliter bags are all that will be necessary for a blood transfusion. Normal saline is the only IV solution suitable for transfusion of blood products. For tubing, you'll need a primary tubing set and a secondary Y-type blood set. Next, set up the tubing for the transfusion. With one of the saline bags, prime the primary tubing, then move to the secondary tubing. Before you begin, close all three roller clamps. There are two spikes on this tubing set. One has a red cap and the other a clear. The red cap covers the non-vented spike, and the clear has a ventilation port attached, identical to those found on the regular tubing sets. If you are ever administering anything through this set that comes from a rigid container, such as a glass bottle, you will need to attach it to the vented spike. But for basic blood product transfusions, this is not the case, and either spike can be used for saline or blood with no impact to the transfusion. First, prime the set with saline. Using one of the spikes, access the remaining saline bag, then open the clamp located between the saline bag and the filter. The filter is the large chamber positioned just below the bifurcation. There are different sets that have filters that look different, but they all function the same. Prime the filter by squeezing it to pull saline from the bag and into the chamber. Squeeze it enough times to fill the chamber just above the level of the filter. The tubing distal to the filter must be primed as well. Open the roller clamp positioned below the filter and allow saline to flow out of the tubing set, then close the roller clamp. With the tubing primed, you can connect the secondary transfusion set to the piggyback port on the primary line, then reopen the roller clamp. You're now ready to release the blood product. Go to the blood tab in the flow sheets. Click on Transfusion Report in the left column. A new window will open. Click on the Release hyperlink. This will prompt Blood Bank to send the blood to the floor. When blood products are received on the floor, there are some strict time frames that must be adhered to. Blood products must be initiated within 30 minutes of release from Blood Bank. If you won't be able to meet that time frame, blood should be returned to the Blood Bank. If the blood has not been hung within the first 20 minutes and there is any possibility that it won't be hung before 30 minutes, Contact Blood Bank immediately and send the product back. If the blood is out of the freezer too long, 
it'll become too warm to be refrozen, and once the blood is greater than 10 degrees Celsius, it will be disposed of. Blood is a very limited resource, so be certain you adhere to the required time frames, or send the unit back to blood bank right away. Blood products must be completely infused within four hours of release from blood bank. Any blood products that remain after four hours must be removed and discarded. Any tubing used for a blood product transfusion must also be disposed of after four hours. This may mean that in some instances, where multiple units are infused quickly, the same tubing could be used for those multiple units, as long as they will all be completed within the four-hour window. But if a consecutive unit of product will not be completed before the four-hour window closes, all new tubing must be used to start that transfusion. This will be the case for most blood transfusions on the inpatient units. The blood will arrive to the floor through the pneumatic tube system. Included with the blood will be a blood product infusion checklist. On one side will be important information regarding the administration of blood products, and on the opposite side will be space to track vitals for the infusion. No patient information is present on this form. Having received the blood, the product must be verified before administration, which means information will be rigorously checked and double-checked prior to giving any blood product to ensure that it is the correct product for this patient and that it is safe for transfusion. This process must be completed by two people. It must include at least one RN, but the second person could be another RN or a PCT trained for blood product verification. Attached to the unit of product, there will be a sticker. On one side of that sticker is patient information, and on the other side is product information. You will be matching this sticker to both the patient by using the wristband and to the product by matching the information to the bag itself. The verification process requires each person to listen to their partner read information while matching that information to their label. And then you will switch roles, and the listener will now read off of their label as the partner listens and matches that information. Begin by verifying the patient. One person will read from the sticker attached to the blood product, while the other listens and matches that to the patient's wristband. Read and spell the patient name. I have Thomas Cruz, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-R-U-Z. Read the birthday. Date of birth, 8-11-1975 and read the MRN, MRN 37860-1342. Now reverse the process, and the listener will read off the wristband as the partner matches to the sticker. Thomas Cruz, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-R-U-Z, date of birth, 8-11-1975, MRN 37860-1342. If there are no discrepancies, move on to verify the product by matching information from the bag to the information on the other side of the sticker. Read the unit number. Unit number W2022227913 Read the blood product code. Blood product code E0336RBCAS1. Read the expiration date. Expiration date 9-20-22. And finally, the blood type. Blood type is AB positive. And then check that the patient's blood type on the opposite side of the sticker matches to ensure that they are compatible. The patient is also AB positive. And then reverse the process and have the information read back. Unit number W2022227913 Blood product code E0336RBCAS1 Expiration date 9-20-22. Blood type AB positive. Patient also AB positive. If all information matches, the product is safe to administer. If there are any discrepancies, do not administer this product, but instead contact Blood Bank immediately. If the verification was successful, log into Epic to finish the process. Go to the blood flow sheet and click on Begin Blood Transfusion. A prompt appears to link the product to a specific IV. Choose the line that will be used for this transfusion. Then scan the unit number, product code, blood type, and expiration date barcodes. If pre-vitals were charted within the last 30 minutes, they should auto-populate in the vitals field. If they do not populate, enter them here. Scroll down to address some more required fields. Verify that consent was signed. If ordered, that any pre-medications were administered. That patient education was provided. Normal saline is infusing, and remember, 0.9 normal saline is the only solution that is appropriate for use with a blood transfusion. Identify if a blood warmer was used, and finally, choose yes on administration charges to complete this sheet.
After you choose Accept, it will give you a chance to review your documentation before choosing Sign Off at the bottom, and then it will prompt you to have your partner sign in, verifying that they completed the double verification process with you and that you found no discrepancies. After they have signed off, they are free to leave, and you will complete the blood administration process for this patient. Now hang the blood. Close the roller clamp leading to the saline. Use the remaining spike to access the blood product. Open the roller clamp below the product bag and squeeze the filter chamber to prime some product into the chamber. Program the infusion pump using the drug library. The priming line should be programmed with IV fluids to the volume of the normal saline bag that is hanging, and you're going to set the rate on this to only one milliliter per hour which will require you to verify an override for a soft program lock. This may seem strange, but I'll explain why in a minute. Program the B-Line to blood products. You'll start by entering the total volume of the bag. That can be found on the sticker attached to the blood product bag. Every unit of blood is not the same, so always verify the volume before programming. You'll notice that the pump does not allow products to be run at anything other than concurrent. We don't really want any fluids added to the blood. It could lead to fluid overload in patients, and that's why we set the rate to the A line to only one milliliter an hour. So even if the A and B lines are both running concurrently, essentially no fluid is being added through the blood. However, this is the backup precaution, because ideally the A line should not be running. Just because the program is set to concurrent does not mean that both lines must be running. So after programming the B line, make sure that the A line is stopped and the B line is running. We programmed the A-Line to run at one milliliter an hour, just in case this step is forgotten, or in case another nurse responds to an occlusion alarm and mistakenly chooses start all when they restart the pump. The advantage to having the blood run as concurrent is that if the blood bag runs empty, the infusion will stop and an alarm will sound alerting the nurse to the completed infusion. If it were set to a piggyback, after the blood product finishes, it would automatically start up the A-Line and not alert the nurse to the completion of the product. You'll need to prime the entire line with blood. Make sure the IV is disconnected from the patient. Cover the IV with a swab cap and then return to the pump. The combined programmed rate of the A and B lines maxes out at 500 milliliters an hour. So you can run the B line at 499 milliliters an hour. And this is the fastest way to prime the tubing. Just ensure that the line is not connected to the patient. Turn it on to this rate and let it drain the fluid into the sink as it primes. When the fluid exiting the line is red, stop the pump and reattach to the patient. For the first 15 minutes of any transfusion, the blood will be administered at the slow rate of only 50 cc's per hour. As soon as you start the blood, get a new set of vitals on the patient and document them in EPIC. During this initial 15 minutes, the nurse will remain in the room at the bedside, observing the patient for any signs of reaction to the blood product. Common signs and symptoms of transfusion reactions can be found on the information page that arrived with the blood. If you notice any reaction in your patient, follow the instructions on this form. On the other side of that form is a place to track the required vital sign checks during a transfusion. You should have already completed the pre-transfusion vitals before you release the blood product, and just now, as you started the blood, you got the start time vitals. The next set will be done after the initial 15 minutes. Then vitals will be required every hour. But be aware that this is an hour from the start time, not from the last set of vitals. So if we started the infusion at 2 o'clock, the 15 minute vitals would be taken at 2.15, and the hour vitals would be taken at 3 o'clock. And if the blood were still running at 4, 5, or 6 o'clock, we would do vitals at those times. Another set will be needed as soon as the transfusion finishes, and then again one hour after the finish time. The vitals can be recorded on this form, but this is just for the easy visualization of trends. The vitals must be transferred into EPIC as well. This form is not a piece of permanent charting. All vitals must be entered into EPIC. If after 15 minutes there are no signs of reaction, increase the rate of the infusion. For non-complicated patients, the infusion should be completed within one and a half to two hours. Patients that have CHF or fluid overload will need a decreased rate of infusion to protect them from any further fluid overload. Remember, the maximum time for an infusion is four hours. When you are checking vitals, also listen to lung sounds. If sounds such as crackles develop, it is a sign that the patient is experiencing fluid overload and the infusion should be slowed. When changing the rate, enter the desired time of infusion into the duration field. Policy does not specify a specific rate of the infusion, only specific time frames. Some units will have more or less than 325 milliliters of blood. They still need to be delivered within a specific time frame, 
so entering a duration of one and a half or two hours will allow the pump to calculate that specific rate for this unit of blood. When the unit is empty and the filter chamber is also empty of blood, there is still some blood in the tubing. To complete this transfusion, this fluid should also be infused into the patient. Close the roller clamp to the empty bag of blood and open the clamp to the saline bag. Prime a small amount of saline into the chamber and resume the infusion. When the tubing is completely filled with saline, the transfusion will be completed. Obtain a set of vitals at this time. Now remove the blood product bag and dispose of it. No blood product bags or tubing, either full or empty, should ever be left in a room if they are not actively in use. If another unit is ordered and it will not be finished within four hours of initiating the first unit, a completely new IV set will be required. In EPIC, the blood product will need to be completed. Go to the blood flow sheet and enter stopped into the action row. Then right click on transfuse RBC and click complete transfuse RBC. The transfuse section for this flow sheet will be removed. The transfusion of blood products can be very dangerous if not done properly. It is important to follow all the steps and time frames when administering blood products to a patient. When transfusing platelets or plasma, different time frames for transfusion will be used. These can be referenced in the transfusion policy.